glad to be back with you. Today I've got a new camera, so hopefully this works out well. I've got a dynamics problem for us today, and we're going to be throwing a ball up a hill. Basically, we're going to be calculating where the ball's going to hit. Now, the problem, right, as I've got set up right now, the initial uh, launch angle of the ball, maybe if we throw it or hit it with something, is 40 degrees from the horizontal. Okay, that's important, not from the hill angle, but from the horizontal. And the hill has is flat and has a 15 degree uh, angle, a slope of 15 degrees. The initial uh, launch velocity is 20 meters a second. I guess I got that. There you go, 20 meters a second. All those things are given, and what I want us to calculate is this distance d up the hill. Now d is not calculated horizontally, d is calculated up the hill. So if you actually laid a tape measure up that hill, what would d be? So we're given all this stuff, and in good old GFSA format, find d. All right, so how are we going to do this? Well, the first thing we need is to know a couple of expressions here. I'm going to call these P of X and L of X. P of X is going to be the uh, path of the ball through space. I'm calling it P just because we know it's a parabola. And L of X is, well, L is for a line, I guess. And L is going to be the uh, uh, line in space that's uh, formed by the top surface of the hill. So what we're really trying to do here is we're trying to figure out where that, that arc, P sub X, that parabola, crosses that line L sub X. We can set those two equal to one another. Once we've done that, we're going to solve for the value of X that makes that true. That'll give us the horizontal distance, and then we're going to find the uh, angular distance, D, or the, the hypotenuse distance. So, solution. Okay. We need to find P of X. Now, I've done this a few times before in other videos. P of X is going to be minus GX squared over 2 V0 squared cosine theta squared plus X tangent theta. Okay? Now, if you need me to, if uh, you need to know how that, where that comes from, go back and check out one of the other videos. Now, this assumes assumes, one, no aerodynamics, make sure I'm still in frame, oh, I got plenty of room, love that new camera, dynamics, okay, no aerodynamics, there's no aerodynamic forces on here, so there's no forces in the horizontal direction, the only forces are going to be in the vertical direction due to gravity, so there's first thing it assumes, next thing it assumes, is x0 and y0 are both 0. And I'm, I'm assuming that because uh, by making the origin there. I don't have to put the origin there. I can put the origin anywhere I want. I can put it up here if I want to. But if I do, it's going to make the math more obnoxious. It's going to make the, the uh, uh, calculations more difficult than they need to be. So I've got this part. Let me just circle that. People have been writing in asking me to use different colors. Well, who am I to say no? So there it is in red. I've got a purple marker over there I'll use here in a minute, I guess. So the next thing I need to do is find, so maybe we'll call that step one. And step two, find L sub x. Well, L is a line, right? If uh, they haven't changed this since I went to junior high school about a thousand years ago, the equation for a line is mx plus b, where that's the slope, all right, m is the slope, x is the, the independent variable, and b is the point at which the line crosses the vertical axis. Well, since I put the origin at 0, 0 right there, that's going to go to 0. Well, how do I find a slope? Well, let's see, m equals rise overrun. I think they still those, use those words. They did back in the, geez, the 70s when I was learning this the first time. But that's also dy over, or delta y over delta x. Well, that's tangent theta. All right. Well, so m must be the tangent of 15 degrees. I've got it written down here. That's 0 0.27, I'm sorry, 26, 7, Nine five. All right. Therefore, L of x equals zero point two six seven nine five x. Two six seven nine five. Okay, I got that right. And since I just happen to have a purple marker here, there you go. 
So we have those two. Now, the next step is pretty simple. All we've got to do is set those two equal to each other and figure out what value of x makes, makes them equal. That is, what, what value of x has those crossing one another. I need a little bit of uh, real estate back here. So let me maybe erase some of this stuff up here. Ooh, I erased my title. I'm not sure that was a good idea. You try not to do that usually. So, set L of X equal to P of X, or I can say P of X minus L of X equals zero. And the reason I do things that way is because every uh, graphing calculator and a lot of scientific calculators have root solvers. Well, remember the root of a function is the value of x that makes that function equal zero. Well, if this is my function, maybe I can call that f of x if I want, then I can just type that into my root solver, I'm good to go. So let's do that. So if I say minus gx squared over 2v0 squared cosine squared theta plus x tangent theta minus, all right, I'm going to write out this way, x tangent uh, beta. This is a little cleaner. I don't have to write out that big number right there. That has to be equal to zero. And maybe I'll call this f of x. It's still in the frame? Yeah, we're good. All right, so if I, if I take this expression right here and find the value of x that makes that expression zero, I found the root. And that x is the horizontal distance that, it, that the ball travels while it's uh, or to get to the impact point. So you can run that through, I don't know, MathCAD, MATLAB, Mathematica, your graphing calculator. There's all kinds of things you can do here. And what you'll find is you've got two roots. This is a parabola. It's a second-order equation. And there's a bunch of, bunch of other terms in here. But we know what all those are. The only variable in here is x. So I've got a parabola. I've got x squared, x to the first, and I don't have any constants. What I'm going to find out is I've got x1 equals 0 and x2 equals, make sure I get the right number here off my notes, um, looks like 27.333 meters. Well, 0, why would it be 0? Well, of course, that's, that's, where the, that's where the launch point was. At x was 0, y was 0, that's where the uh, parabola p of x and the line l of x crossed each other the first time. So that's the launch point. All right, it's mathematically true, but it's not what we're trying to find. Here's the impact point. All right, so the only thing we need to know now is I know this is 27.333 meters, and I know that's 15 degrees. Oh, that's terrible. Let's see if I can do a little better job of that. That's 15 degrees, but that this is not what the problem asked for. This is what the problem asked for. So last step, I'm going to say, let's see, cosine of 15 degrees is going to equal 27.333 over D. And if I solve that for D, I'm going to get almost 27.33, but just a little bit uh, more than that, because it's a very low angle. And for this very low angle, that number and that number ought to be pretty close to one another. That's a pretty good check. And it uh, turns out that's true, and I'm going to get 28.3 meters. So let me I'll use my purple marker again. All right, there you go. So there's the answer, 28.3 meters on the diagonal up that hill. I hope this helps, and I'll see you next time.